As a normal part of growth and development, the body must generate new blood vessels to oxygenate the tissues. In a process called angiogenesis, new vessels sprout from existing ones. In this movie, we see endothelial cells sprouting to form new branches from the aorta of a zebrafish embryo. Each sprout is initially formed by one or a few endothelial cells. The process begins when an endothelial cell of a small vessel is activated by an angiogenic stimulus, such as vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF. In response to the stimulus, the endothelial cell becomes motile and extends filopodia that guide the development of a capillary sprout. The leading, or tip cell, continues to move away from the capillary as cells behind it migrate in and divide, forming a stalk. The sprout begins to hollow out, forming a tube. In this process, pinocytic vesicles fuse with one another. The large vacuoles formed in this way then fuse with one another, creating a lumen that runs through the capillary sprout. In culture, endothelial cells behave in a similar way. They spontaneously develop internal vacuoles that join up from cell to cell, creating a single lumen shared by many cells. In the example shown here, the individual cells contain either a red or a green fluorophore. Note that the areas of green and red are distinct. Even though cells share a lumen, they do not share cytoplasm and remain separate cells after the fusion events. Angiogenesis is critical not only in normal development and wound healing, but also in the development of tumors. A tumor must stimulate blood vessel formation to grow more than a few millimeters in size. VEGF is a key activator of angiogenesis in both normal cells and tumors. When cells within a tumor become oxygen deficient, they begin to express VEGF. VEGF diffuses through the tissues, activating endothelial cells on nearby vessels. This results in capillary sprouting. Some new cancer therapies are targeted to block the action of VEGF, with varying clinical results.